One of my big issues with the NFL today is the way players are evaluated and analyzed the statistics used to grade who is a good player and project who might be successful in the NFL as a college athlete. Now, with, with, with the football, I'm going to give you two examples on offense and defense. For example, when it comes to the defense, there's a lot of prejudice as far as sacks. We overvalue getting the sack. Now, when you get a sack on a quarterback, you know, you stop the quarterback behind the line of scrimmage, and at the same time, you, they lose a down, right? So that's a sack, pretty much. And we value that we grade uh, defensive players on how many sacks they get. Sometimes you might, you might get become the defensive player of the year if you get more sacks than any other defensive player, usually, right? On the flip side, a defensive player will do the exact same thing by getting a TFL, a tackle for loss, by stopping a wide receiver or a running back behind the line of scrimmage. They lose a down and they stop them behind the line of scrimmage. The same effect, the same outcome is the same as the sack, but we'll put so much value on the sack and on the mind the value of the TFL, the tackle for loss. On the offensive side, if a quarterback throws a ball to a wide receiver and it's intercepted, right? That is called an intercepted by the defensive player. Before the ball touches the, the, the offensive player, maybe the wide receiver. All right, so that's, a, that's an interception. On the flip side, if the, the, the quarterback throws a perfect spiral to a wide receiver, he catches it, it bounces off his chest, goes up in the air, and a defensive player catches it. It still counts as an interception against the quarterback, even though he threw a perfect pass. So why would you, why would you penalize the quarterback for throwing a perfect pass when it was a wide receiver that allowed that pass to bounce off his chest or his hand and be caught by a defensive player? So that should be a, a fumble interception or a catch interception or something like that so that we can penalize the wide receiver and not the quarterback for making that mistake. Okay, so the statistics make it difficult to get very good evaluation and project who's going to be a good player or not. And that's why sometimes you have players last only a few years in the NFL, two or three years, or they become bombs and they draft at number one overall peak because we're not precisely using the right statistics to evaluate this player. And there are many other examples, but these are two big ones, two important ones that are used wrongly or incorrectly. What do you think? Let me know.